Hi, thanks for joining me as you're watching this video. If you are looking at this video right now, I know two things about you already. First of all, you are a person who has gone online and looked at every video that you can imagine about The Apprentice because you're interested in purchasing it. Or secondly, you already own The Apprentice and you are interested in finding out if there's anything new that you can discover about The Apprentice to help you fly the plane a little bit better. Well, I'm here to let you know this is the video for you. Because first of all, you will not see a whole lot of video or images about the plane flying. That's not what my idea of this video is all about. Actually, there are three things that I want to share with you about this uh, particular video. The first one is I want to show and share with you some basic things that I learned and discovered after I purchased The Apprentice. Now I looked at videos too and I'll be honest with you, they're great. But one thing I discovered after I bought the airplane, there's a whole lot more involved in just screwing it together and putting rubber bands on the airplane. There was a lot of stuff that I had to purchase and do after I got involved with the airplane. The the second thing that I want to share with you is some modifications that I've uh, done to the airplane. And these modifications are things that are necessary and that will probably help you fly the plane a little bit better too. And the third thing that I want to share with you in this video is uh, a little extra. Something that I've done to uh, make transporting the airplane and also handling the airplane uh, at the flying field when I get there. So yep, this is going to be different. I think it's going to be something that you're really going to enjoy. This is the guy that we're talking about, the uh, Apprentice. Uh, I think it's a great beginner's airplane. When I first got involved uh, back into flying airplanes just a couple of months ago, uh, there was two airplanes on the market that I was looking at. One of these airplanes cost twice as much as the Apprentice. So that was the reason basically why I decided to get uh, involved with the Apprentice. And the other reason was too is because the specifications for both of the airplanes was identical. So I figured if I didn't really want to get involved in this after I started with the Apprentice, I will at least have not put too much money in it. But to my surprise, I'm very satisfied with the airplane. It's doing great and I'm just moving ahead uh, along and, and getting better at flying the airplane and getting back into model aviation. Now, you may be saying, how in the world can a guy that's just flying airplanes again can be knowledgeable enough to share information with you? Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a newbie at this. In fact, I um, used to fly model airplanes a long, long time ago. Now, here's a magazine back in my day. Uh, it's called uh, RC Modeler. This was a magazine back in my day. Now, there's something very amazing about this magazine that I want to show you. And that is, if you look at the cover, there's a real model on the cover. And I'm not talking about a model airplane either, a real model. So back in the day, to get us guys interested, they would have a real model on the cover. Of course, not everything is Photoshop. You know, the images are very sharp, helicopters sharp, airplanes sharp, in dramatic positions and all that kind of good stuff. But um, here's an article that I wrote for the magazine. And uh, back in that day, I was flying single channel, rudder only. And the equipment was not nearly as good as it is today, as it is today. And um, I mean, the transmitters and receivers today, and everything is electric now. Back in my day, it was either gas or rubber power. And uh, right now, it's a great time to get back into flying remote control uh, airplanes. And so I'm really appreciative of the fact that now you can buy an airplane on a box put it together in an hour or so and if your batteries are charged up you can head out to the field and fly. So with that in mind I want to go into uh, sharing with you those three areas that I talked about and see if I can make your experience with The Apprentice far better than, uh, than you imagine. And if you already have The Apprentice hopefully some of the other things that I'll share with you will definitely improve your ability to enjoy flying the airplane. 
Not that that's very difficult to do because it's a very easy airplane to fly. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to dive into the video. And if you want to just sit back, take notes, of course, you can rewind the video and play back different sections that you need. But I really, really think you're going to enjoy this video because it's designed not just for um, a person who is thinking about uh, flying the apprentice, but also for persons that have already purchased the airplane. So let me stop talking and you guys just sit back and enjoy the video because we're going to share some neat things with you, okay? If you really want to get a head start in flying remote control airplanes, a flight simulator is so important. In fact, what it will do is it will save you from crashing your airplane and actually give you an opportunity to learn how to fly even before you take it out of the box. This is the reason why I got such a great start in flying the Apprentice is because I had a flight simulator to practice on. check that you'll need to make is the center of gravity check. Make sure that you balance the aircraft exactly to the position that's illustrated in the instruction manual. If your plane does not balance properly, then take one half ounce fishing weight, flatten them with the hammer, and then add them to the point where the plane actually balances. Once you've done this check, you are ready for the air.
Okay, one of the biggest surprises I got when I opened my apprentice was the fact that the ailerons were torn. So you may have to use hinge tape to repair it. You don't have to send it back, just take the tape and use it. I use it in fact on all my flying surfaces. Another problem I discovered is that you'll need to epoxy the battery leads so that you don't accidentally pull the wires out when you're disconnecting the plugs. A little bit of epoxy goes a long ways. Well, we're at the end of this video and I really want to thank you for taking a look at it. I hope you learned something. If not, I hope you also improved on something. The last two items that I want to show you is a windsock. It's made out of wire and construction tape. And the last item that I want to show you is a carrying cradle that I designed and constructed. It allows me to uh, put the apprentice in the back of my truck and transport it without damaging it. So I hope you had a good time and as they say, if you crash and you can walk away from it, it was a good landing. Blue skies, guys.